Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a binary logistic regression in SPSS using one continuous predictor variable and one dichotomous variable. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor, I have an ID variable, and there's 100 records in this data set. I have a continuous predictor named motivation. I have a dichotomous predictor variable named referral source and there's just the two levels of course and you have self and agency it's coded as zero or one and then I have a dependent variable also dichotomous and that is completed or not completed again zero or one so we'll assume that this is for a drug and alcohol treatment program a substance use treatment program and there's two outcomes when a client comes into the program. They either complete the program or they do not complete the program. So that's the dichotomous outcome variable. The referral source, let's assume for this particular program, there can only be two referral sources that would be possible for being referred into the program, self and agency. So there's no other category here. It's a self-referral or it's agency referred. Those are the two referral sources. So a client can decide to come in on their own or they can be referred by an agency. So again, dichotomous, just two levels there. And then motivation would be a score that's observed on a psychometric instrument that measures motivation with a higher score being associated with a higher level of motivation and a lower score being associated with a lower level of motivation. Before moving into the binary logistic regression, because we do have a categorical predictor variable here, referral source, I think it's a good idea to run a chi-square and take a look at the relationship between the referral source and the outcome. So I'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs, and I'm going to put the presumed predictor variable here, which will be a referral source in the row list box, and the outcome variable in the column. Of course, it would work either way, uh, but typically if we have a predictor variable, that goes into the row list box. Under statistics, I'm going to check off chi-square and hit continue. Under cells, I'm going to add expected and the percentages and then click continue. No changes for format or style. And then click OK. And again, this is a chi-square, not the logistic regression. So we have referral source times outcome, the cross tabulation. And this table, we have three tables here in the output, but this table, the middle table, would be of the most interest. And we can see that when we have a self-referral, and we look at the outcome, we have 17 completed and 44 not completed, with an agency referral, 35 completed and 4 not completed. So it would appear, before even getting into the logistic regression, that the individuals that referred by an agency have a higher probability of the completed outcome. So we keep that in mind as we analyze the results from the binary logistic regression. So to conduct the binary log logistic regression, we'll go to Analyze, Regression, and Binary Logistic. Notice that I'm running the statistic from the Statistics Viewer. It can be conducted from the Data Editor as well. So here is the dialog for the logistic regression. The dependent variable would be the outcome. And motivation is considered a covariate here in the, in the uh, logistic regression dialog, and the referral source is considered a covariate. So these are the predictor variables. Now, one is continuous motivation, but referral source is nominal, in this case dichotomous. So I'm going to click categorical and move referral source over to the categorical covariates list box. Notice that by default, the reference category is set to last. I'll click continue. 
Under Save, I'm going to save the probabilities and the group membership. These two will be new variables on the data editor. This will not appear in the output. The probabilities and the group membership, these are both variables. Click Continue. Under Options, I'm going to add the classification plots, the HL goodness of fit, and the confidence interval for the XP beta. And click Continue. And there'll be no changes under Style. I'll just click OK. And we can see here the results from the logistic regression. We have no missing cases. The dependent variable encoding completed is 0, not completed is 1. For referral source, self and agency, we have 61 self referrals, 39 agency referrals. Then moving down the output tables, I want to get down to model summary. We can see here our square. 0.595. So roughly 60% of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the predictor variables. We also have a non-statistically -stat significant result, 0.963, on the HL test, and that's what we would want here. Then moving down the output tables to the classification table, here we have the observed outcome and the predicted outcome. And we can see that most of the time this model predicted the correct outcome. For completed observation and completed outcome we have 43. Not completed for predicted just 9. And for not completed in the completed predicted category we have 8. And an observation of completed that was in fact predicted is not completed 40. So the model appears to be working fairly well just looking at the classification table. And then we want to interpret the variables in the equation. And of particular interest uh, first would be the p-values. And we can see here that we have a statistically significant finding for motivation and for referral source. This level of referral source would be the self-referral. And before we interpret the EXP beta, I want to take a look down here and we can see the predicted probability is of membership for not completed. So we keep that in mind as we interpret variables in the equation. So when we look at motivation, what this tells us that as motivation increases, you can see we have a 0.914 value here. As motivation increases, the odds of outcome being not completed decrease. And more specifically, if we take 1 and subtract this value, it gives us 0.086 or 8.6%. So as motivation increases by one unit, the odds of a not completed outcome decrease by 8.6%. When taking a look at the referral source, and again this is for self-referred, the 7.271 tells us that when we have a referral source of self, the odds that we're going to have a not completed outcome are increased by 7.271 times. It's 7.271 times higher for the self-referral as compared to the agency referral. And then the last area I want to take a look at is the data editor. I want to take a look at the two variables that were created. One is the predicted probability and the other is the predicted group and again these are on the data editor and not on the output and this first variable predicted probability gives us the probability that this particular case this particular record will have an outcome of not completed so for this first record with a motivation of 42 and a self-referral, there was a 70% probability that not completed would be the outcome. You can see in this case the model was incorrect. The actual outcome was completed and the predicted group was not completed. In the next record, however, it was correct. The motivation at level 58 and the referral as self-referred, the actual outcome was completed. The probability that the outcome would be not completed was only about 36%. So the predicted group was completed.
I hope you found this video on conducting a binary logistic regression in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.